If you were born before the launch of Warhammer 3, you probably know that chariots were in a pretty bad state for release. Their mass, impact damage, and collision attacks felt anemic, sluggish, and sometimes downright pathetic. They'd tickle an adversary for minutes on end before actually killing anything, and it basically made Slanesh chariots not worth bringing, ever. Thankfully, that's been addressed in subsequent patches, and chariots are in a much better spot now than ever before. Right? Yes, and So there's no question that chariots, particularly single entity chariots, are at least decent in their obvious intended role, which is to run over and through infantry formations. Looking at some of the examples here, Malekith on his Cold One Chariot, and Lurus on her Exalted Seeker Chariot are capable of dealing anywhere from 700 to 1200 damage as they collide with and punch through Norskin Berserkers or Dwarf Warriors. Typically, that's going to equate to roughly one-tenth of an enemy infantry formation's total HP pool, which is pretty good damage. As expected, flank and rear charges along the length of the line tend to perform much better, dealing upwards of 50% more damage and making it much less likely that your chariot will get stuck and bogged down than if you were to frontally charge the middle of a braced regiment. There doesn't appear to be anything particularly egregious going on in terms of mass problems either, though they're not amazing for certain AI factions, ironically the dwarfs, because the AI is really good at facing the chariot and immediately bracing, making efficient use of their charge defense against large. But with patient micro and good positioning, you can still rack up some pretty insane kills. So far, so good. However, there is a major problem facing chariots in their current form, and it really doesn't have anything to do with Immortal Empires or the build we have currently as content creators, because it's a problem that has existed off and on for certain chariot models pretty much since this trilogy began. The problem is that units like the Exalted Seeker Chariot and Cold One Chariot cannot get the vast majority of their damage on target, to models positioned directly in front of them. What does that mean? We just saw a bunch of examples where they clearly dealt tremendous damage to infantry in front of the chariot. Well, these are very complicated units with a lot of separate damage components. They deal impact and collision damage. The riders have attacks as they swing their weapons in a drive-by. Their steeds have separate attacks as well. And all that is further amplified and complicated by their innate bonus versus infantry, armor piercing, and generally high charge bonus values. And in the case of copious amounts of infantry, all of these elements are able to work in tandem and deal noticeable damage the way it's intended. But what happens when we give them only a single infantry model to fight? Say, in the case of dueling high-value characters and lords. Well, this is where chariots begin to break down. Take this example here. Malekith the Witch King versus Standard Beast Lord. Malekith is way more expensive, has more HP, and is designed to kill infantry. I think the vast majority of us can agree, Malekith should probably win this fight, right? But as we watch this combat unfold, you will consistently see the impact deal around 100 damage. Never more than that, which means Malekith would need 47 successful charges to kill off a foot character. The only time you see Malekith deal even remotely good damage that would reflect his stats is when he pulls up alongside the model and hits them with his sword which is not realistically something you can account for in battle. Nothing about these chariot stat lines or cost would imply they'd be terrible at dueling foot characters, but their performance indicates otherwise here, and as I stop the cycle charging and allow them to fight each other standing still, Malekith goes a full minute without hitting his opponent once. 66 melee attack, 38 base plus 28 bonus versus infantry, he cannot hit a beast lord with only 40 melee defense. And as we've already seen, the charge damage is so tiny as to be almost negligible, so cycle charging him into oblivion isn't going to work either. Now naturally, a chariot's low melee defense will contribute towards them getting hit more often if they get bogged down. Chariots are not meant to fight in sustained melee just sitting there. But with 28 bonus versus infantry and 80 plus charge, they should pretty much be at the hit chance cap on impact against foot characters. Yet they're only dealing 100 damage, which will take forever to kill any foot duelist, period. But they're just not landing attacks often even when they do charge, and when they do, they're dealing next to no damage unless they perfectly ride by and the Lord himself is in range to swing. Why is this happening? It's because only the steeds up front are attacking and seem to be either partially or fully divorced from the stat line of the Lord himself, which isn't a problem when bowling through dozens of models, but becomes a huge issue when faced with only one. Now, just to be clear, Chariots should not be able to charge a Grombrandal or Sigvald or Foot Archaeon with impunity and take no damage in return. I would absolutely expect a full-strength White Dwarf to beat a full-strength Loris on a Seeker. 
but this problem has very real battle implications, especially for your chariots and when they get into those late game situations, which are very common, especially in a multiplayer setting. So if for some reason you don't believe this 1v1 test, how about we see it in action, in a real battle? This was a real multiplayer fight I had against Rubber Duck of War, where I was able to route off Felix Jaeger from the rest of the dwarf army and had an AP bonus versus infantry specialist chasing him off the map. I have to kill him here. If he returns, he's going to give innate regen to Gromredal, and I'm just going to straight up lose the game. I must be able to kill him quickly before he's able to reunite with the White Dwarf. She has 300 weapon strength, majority AP, and 85 charge bonus, and is number one, almost always missing her attacks on impact, and number two, only dealing between 75 and 110 damage on the charges where she successfully hits. Mathematically, Dealing such little damage would be pretty much impossible unless only the steeds were attacking, and functionally, I believe that's what's occurring here. And while that might make logical sense from a realism standpoint, after all, her arms aren't 20 feet long, she can't hit people 20 feet away from her, it's very bad from a gameplay perspective because it makes her functionally useless in a role she should be very good at performing, which is using her speed, bonus versus infantry, and AP to finish off a routing character. If Slanesh can't run you down, that is a large problem. Obviously, it does not make sense for a chariot to be this bad at killing routing foot troops that aren't even fighting back, and will often have diminished melee defense because they aren't facing or braced for the charge. Ultimately, the situation drags on so long, I just kind of give up and force a fight that I can't possibly win because she just isn't doing her job properly, and I don't want to cheese Rubber Duck of War, he's my friend. I don't think I had enough to kill Grombi in this fight, so we likely would have carried the day anyway, but this is just one example of how wonky and illogical situations can arise from chariots being unable to more than tickle foot lords and heroes. It's going to be a problem in campaign. It's going to be a problem in multiplayer. It affects some very important units on multiple rosters, including legendary lords. And it is definitely something that needs to be looked at and addressed, but thoughtfully, because chariots are otherwise in an okay spot. Hope you guys enjoyed. See you in the next one.